So uh, this is the, uh, the uh, Smart LED uh, unit that we're going to put in that's in the uh, downstairs restroom. Uh, we're we've already got this flashed, so they've already built, built a curb for us, and they've got it waterproofed up top. So we're just ready to uh, drop the top tube in <clears throat> and make an alignment. We'll look for our target down below, and then, we'll, uh, uh, then we can go ahead and tape it off and then get our uh, dome and get it all uh, completely waterproofed. So we'll just set this right over the top here, and I'm going to pull the liner off so I can actually see down here. Okay, so what I'm visually looking for is the target down below. We've got an X on the ground there that I can see. Pretty straight, so what I'm gonna do is right up from above here, as I'm holding this down, I'm gonna reach inside and make an angle as I'm pulling that down. Kind of hard to see from there, but what I'm doing is when I'm reaching down, I'm actually holding down on the ring from the top and then grabbing the, uh, the angle and be able to move it that way as it's inside the uh, flashing. If I'm just about where I need to be and I need to make some fine tune adjustments, I can actually take the, uh, the tabs here and actually uh, uh, move the tube around where, uh, to wherever I need it to, to land at. Still a little bit less angle. Okay, that's about right right there. So what I'm going to do is then go ahead and pull this back out. And then I can tape off all the, uh, the angles and then tape everything off and seam it. I want to lock this into place because I'm pretty sure that's where the, uh, pretty confident that's where the uh, angle is. We're going to tape off all the seams and this is going to help block out any, uh, any light from leaking out for bugs to kind of find their way in or dust or debris to get inside the uh, tubing. So we'll, we'll block off all those here. Just take one of these empty tape core rolls uh, we got or something uh, flat like a credit card or a business card or something that would work. And we're just going to seam this down. The tape has a uh, pressure sensitive adhesive on the backing and we just want to make sure that we get a good seal. And then we're, we're uh, working on all the creases so we don't have any light leaking out. Uh, for invitation for bugs and dust and stuff to get inside the tubing. All right, that's all seamed up. So I'm just going to drop this back in. Find my angle again. That's about it right there. So this is flush to the flashing. So we've got a seal here on the uh, Brighten Up series. We've got that uh, seal. I'll just pull back out so I can show you. This seal interfaces with the flashing itself to make a... Uh, a watertight gap there so you're not having air exchange at this point here uh, and not getting any water inside the uh, tubing itself. So I'm going to just drop, drop that back down and what it does is it sandwiches in between the ring here and the flashing itself. So once I've got that flush I can go ahead and take my dome screws here and actually start piercing them in. So we're just going to pilot our own hold here. I'm going to hold this down. And if any of the if the tube pushes out just a little bit, what I can do is just back up the screw just a little bit, and then hold it hold the tubing uh, very slightly next to it, and then drive it back in. All right, so that's uh, fastened to the flashing there. I'm going to go ahead and take our inner dome. On the inner dome, there's these little uh, clamps, and what we'll do is we'll line them up here with these notches that are on the uh, ring itself. And so we'll just take those and we can easily just kind of hook one of them. And as we, as we push it around, we can snap it in place on all four sides there. So that's nice and secure. Uh, this has got the inner dome protection on here. Uh, we're just about ready for the, uh, for the top tube to go on. Same, same kind of concept with the uh, uh, top tube or the, uh, the dome is we've got the little uh, the notches here and the uh, little tabs here on the ring itself on the outer side that we're just going to line up right now. We're not going to we're not going to fasten it yet. We're going to line it up because we still have the light tracker to put on. And we want to make sure that this goes facing south. So we're going to double check here on our convenient little app here. We'll find out exactly where south is. So south is facing directly that direction back there. And so what we want is the actual light tracker facing south with the reflective material hitting that. So all that southern, uh, southern light is going to come in here and help push light down into the tube. So I'm just going to pick uh, on these little tabs here on the outside. I'm going to make a mark to where I want it to, or, or place my thumb on there where I want it to, to sit. That way then I can actually install on the inside. With the reflective side facing out, I'm going to take the uh, light tracker. I'm going to push it into these tabs very carefully. Once I get it in, I'm just going to give it a good push down. It is a pressure fit. So once you give it a good push down, it's got a nice tight seat, uh, fit on there. It's not going to fall out. I'm going to take the liner off, so now we've got the reflective material showing. And then I'm going to go ahead and realign. 
Uh, I, what I can do is just hook again like I did before, and then I can go ahead and snap down on all four. And now we got a good uh, seal over the top, flashing set, uh, and it's all good to go. So what we're doing is we got to measure, uh, again, we've got ceiling tile here. We can't walk up on top of here, but we've got a relatively short tube run so we can take a measurement here. And what we're going to do is measure from the base of the, of the top tube up there. So I'm just going to hit right at the base of that tube all the way down to the ceiling grid. That's going to give me my total tube run length. So I got uh, both sides measurement is about 52 and a half inches. So I'm going to add two inches of overlap to that so that, I, that the, when I push the uh, tube up inside there, we'll overlap two inches inside, so we'll have structural uh, support there. And so we'll, at 54 and a half inches, that's gonna give me plenty of clearance uh, and uh, be able to fit into here no problem. And then we'll wind up supporting this and hanging this from the, uh, uh, from the top there. From here, I'm just gonna take this bottom assembly and set it aside for right now. What I'll do is uh, actually build my tubing so that I'll have something to work with here. So I'm just going to take the liner off. Okay, so I'm going to take these uh, tubes, the extension, extension tubes. I'm just going to take the center piece, and you've got notches here to make, uh, like we did earlier on the uh, Solo Master, we've got notches to make this a tapered tube. So what I'm going to do is take this and set it into the shallow notch here to make it a wider opening. I'm going to weave it through the center, uh, center portion here. And then I'm going to take that bottom piece and then put it into the shallow or the deep notch to make it a smaller opening. So I've got large opening on top, small opening on the bottom. That's my tapered tube. What I want to do is lock that into place and put some uh, foil tape on there on that seam. Again, all the foil tape is uh, pressure sensitive adhesive on the back side there. So we just want to seam that down, work out all the creases. Okay. I'll set that one aside. We'll build the other one. Okay, so now that we've got the two tubes built, uh, we can go ahead and start to build the uh, tube run. And so uh, what I did is I went and uh, quickly remeasured the uh, distance, and I've got 54 and a half inches total length that I'll need from the base of the unit all the way to the last extension tube. <clears throat> so in order to do that, I'm just going to take the liner off of the, uh, uh, the tube here on the uh, Smart LED itself. Remember the tubes themselves are tapered, so we've got a uh, large notch at the top, so it's wide open at the top, small notch at the bottom, uh, or deep notch at the bottom makes it a smaller opening. So this is going to fit actually inside. The small uh, diameter of the, the, the extension tube is going to fit inside this bottom tube. So we can just go ahead and put that on there. And there's that one little rivet there that you got to just get past there and then we can overlap the tubing. Once that's good there, then we can go ahead and tape this one together. We're gonna have to overlap this one a little bit because we've got 54 and a half inches and we've got uh, 48 inches worth of extension tube plus the base here, so we've got to uh, overlap quite a bit. So we're gonna put it in here. Drop it down as far as we can go. And I'm gonna measure from the base all the way up to the top. I've got 54 and three quarters here. Tiny bit right there, 54 and a half right there. That's my total tube run. Tube run. So that doesn't move, I'm gonna quickly tape that. And then seam it and seal that tape down. Before I go any further, I want to make sure that I put fasteners in. So I just want to put two screws on each side uh, of each of, uh, of the uh, overlaps. So this is all fastened and ready to go. The only thing that I haven't taped yet is the angle because we still got to make some adjustments as we put it in. So I'm going to do that. What I'm going to do is put on the expansion joint seal at this point. This is going to help fill up the gap at the very top. The top tube is a little bit larger than the, uh, than the tubing itself, so this will help fill in the void there. Uh, it also will help for uh, expansion and contraction as the building shifts and moves uh, with heat and cold uh, throughout the year. I'm just going to wrap it around the top here. Okay, that's on. 
we're ready to put this in. So we're gonna, just gonna fit this tube in here. Again, the ceiling grid is not complete yet, so they're going to change the entire ceiling grid. Uh, they've got a mark on the floor here, again, where we wanna, where they want the daylight in. They're gonna change the grid completely and, uh, and change the pattern. So they're gonna make the pattern uh, fit the, uh, the uh, Smart LED system. Uh, and we're just gonna tack it up at the top for them so when they come to uh, uh, finish the ceiling grid, they can take this out make their adjustments with the ceiling and then they can easily put it back in and, uh, and not disturb anything here. So what we're going to do is just push this up in here, get it to the ceiling level. This does have a little bit of an angle, so I'm going to do it some here. And try to push up into that tube. So up on top, we've got somebody on the top there that's going to uh, fasten the uh, tube to the uh, to the top tube. That way, it stays in place. All set. Yep. Excellent. Okay. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of tape and tape off my angle down here. All those other seams that we hadn't taped off yet, we're going to go ahead and seal those off as well. Okay, that's set in place. We just need the uh, natural effect lens. Let's set this over here. Uh, we're going to put the natural effect lens on. There's a little tab on here that's facing down. This is if we ever need to do any maintenance in here, we can easily pull this back down. So this is going to face down. Uh, the interface on this is going to fit right in between the tubing and the ring itself. So it's just going to snap right in there. Again, a pressure fit on this one. So that's seated in there. If we ever had to pull it out, we could grab that little tab there and pull it out. Okay, next we're going to put in the diffuser. Uh, on, on the diffuser itself, there's these little tabs. They're going to fit right into these gates that are uh, all around the tube or the, uh, the ring here at the bottom. We're just going to uh, align those with that. And then we can put the diffuser all the way on. And then it's just a twist on fit. And so then you can match your, uh, your angles on this OptiView lens. Uh, to whatever direction you want. If you want it to follow the grid here to follow the same pattern, uh, you can line it up so that it's level and even uh, and so it looks nice in the room. Uh, you can also go cross pattern if you'd like. Uh, you can just take out the diffuser and then uh, move it to the other gates and then you can get your alignment, whatever you need. But in this case, this is uh, all set. So this is the Solar Tube Smart LED system, uh, and pretty typical. It's a, a 160 unit, so 10 inch uh, tubing attached to a uh, amplifier that we have at the base that has already installed uh, four uh, LED uh, um, diodes that are inside here. So the intention is low uh, low wattage, low energy use, and low energy consumption. Inside, there's a light sensor. So whatever daylight's coming through, it's going to read that light sensor coming through. If there's enough light, uh, it will, it will uh, keep the, uh, the diodes from turning on. If there's not, it will, it will pop on. This also has function fu uh, functionality for occupancy sensor as well. So you can put an occupancy sensor along with this. And so now you got dual function. So now if there's enough light, but there's nobody in the space, it will actually stay off. So it's saving even more energy. So the idea is that you, you don't have to mess with a switch. You can leave the switch or, in this case, uh, possibly leave it out completely in the, in the restroom that we're going to put it in. Um, so common questions, uh, placement, usually a common uh, question for this here. Obviously, in a restroom, you'd want to have it uh, in good enough location where if somebody's using a stall, uh, they could uh, still trigger it because it, this con it continually reads. Uh, the space as it's uh, installed, so it will uh, it will sense somebody that's that's in there. Uh, we have a driver uh, that will that will uh, supply a, a power mm -hmm. to the actual uh, unit itself. Oh, and so this here will have line voltage come into it here. So whatever the line voltage is here, uh, this is intended for uh, 110. Okay. So if we have 277, we'll have to have a converter. Oh. Um, but this is intended for 110. So this will come in here. They're pre or pre. Uh, preset uh, plug-and-play um, 
controls here. So your connection points for your electrical, you can't mess it up. They only go into each individual one. One's round, uh, one's uh, rectangular, and the other one's uh, square. So the 60, 360 degree sensor will go plug into that, not into the box. It goes yes, into just straight into the uh, right. collimator here. Yeah. So this will plug into here. There is a, a, a ground terminal, so this is a, a, the bonding wire, what we call, mm -hmm. and it will get attached here. That's going to help with any surges in the building, if you've got lightning strikes or anything like that in the area. Uh, it's going to help protect the unit. Uh, so it's pretty simple. Inside here, there's just a, a, a three-wire connection. You've got your ground that's going to attach to the back here, and then you've also got uh, uh, the two wires, your control uh, and your neutral. So your power, your neutral, that's going to convert uh, the, uh, so it gets power 24 seven, seven days a week. Correct. Not switched. Not switched. Mm -hmm. If you have it switched, then it turns off and then there's a break in the power. This is a motion sensor to turn the light on, correct? Correct. Okay. So how much time does a person allowed, oh, for this to be timed off? If somebody went into the stall and spent their business in there a little bit too long with the light shut read off? Read the paper. Yeah. Read yep. the paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this runs, <laughs> the, the, the sensor will actually read continuously, so it'll read constantly all the time. But if it can't see you. But if it can't see you, it runs through a five minute period. So there's a five minute window. If it doesn't see anything, after five minutes it says, okay, time to turn off. That's when you're sitting there and then you wave the paper up above. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> So the nice thing is, is that we introduced this, uh, I want to say three years ago. Uh, in that three years, we've made many adjustments to this. So at first we had some, uh, some issues up front. We've added the bonding wire that, we've, uh, the, the, that helps protect the, the, uh, the diodes. We found that some lightning strikes or uh, surges in the, uh, in the wiring uh, had issues with uh, actually uh, damaging the diodes themselves. So with the addition of this here, we did numerous tests, numerous studies. Uh, we actually did uh, uh, simulated lightning strikes uh, at, a, at a lab uh, to where we uh, uh, tested this and validated the uh, use of it there. Um, that's been fixed. We've also upgraded the, uh, the diodes to the second generation so they're a little bit brighter than the uh, initial that we had uh, introduced. Uh, and as, as, they, as the technology gets greater, uh, we will continue to look at uh, changing the, the diodes to hopefully get up to a level that would, uh, that would meet Title 24. Average lumens is 35. I think 35 lumens per. What is the life expectancy of the lamp? The, the lamps themselves, the diodes are, um, you know, LEDs uh, have this long uh, period. Mm -hmm. If you go to a trade show, they say all they're, they're, they're gonna last 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. um, right. And as, as we've lived with LEDs, uh, it's, we've seen you know, the, the, uh, the medium screw and base that you can change out for your homes and the, some of the diodes that we've had as well. They don't always last 20 years. The anticipated life on these is 15 to 20 years, and that's what, what uh, we get the, uh, um, the diodes themselves actually come from Cree, so it okay. is a reputable yeah. uh, uh, diode uh, or LED mm -hmm. uh, manufacturer, so Cree has a really good guarantee. We work with them uh, as, far as, uh, as far as the product goes and really testing this out, so uh, aside from the issues we had up front initially, uh, we've made uh, huge improvements as far as the longevity of this here.